Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. And then uh, uh, hope you had a great afternoon. Uh, today, we will be talking about testing with the screen reader. Uh, I will be talking through this, uh, uh, this pre presentation. And then uh, we will answer your question. So if you can hold on your question, or you can post it to the chat. But we will be answering that toward the end of the session. And then I make sure to leave some uh, time uh, for answer, for questions and answer. My name is Hadi Rangin. I'm a member of IT accessibility team at University of Washington. And then uh, if you didn't know that, I am blind. And then I have been uh, working in, uh, as an accessibility consultant. Uh, for over how many 30 years and then um, uh, so had the chance to work in, to work with many designer developers throughout my career today uh, we will be talking about testing with screen reader this is a question that i usually get uh, hey can we use the screen reader for testing and then uh, so some people are too eager to test with the screen reader but there are some pitfalls that we should know about it, and that's why we are uh, talking about it today. In today's presentation, to today's talk, we will, I will be talking a little bit about the difference between functional and technical accessibility, and a little bit about um, uh, keyboard accessibility, and then uh, uh, talk about uh, screen read, how a screen reader works, and later uh, we dive into a live demo. So here in the accessibility field, we differentiate between technical and functional accessibility. What is technical accessibility? Technical accessibility uh, refers to, um, you know, uh, to uh, uh, if uh, in the technical accessibility, we look into uh, implementation of the, uh, the, uh, uh, of the element that we are dealing with. For example, we look into a, a button, if the button, if the uh, standard coding has been used to implement that button, that ensures that assistive technology have access to it, and then you can uh, operate it. Then uh, in this way, we are, technical accessibility is not just necessarily uh, focuses on uh, 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 you know, accessibility is also make sure that other uh, medium like, for example, mouse can access the uh, elements. In the functional accessibility, uh, we uh, brighten our, uh, our uh, consideration. We just not looking into the an element uh, itself, we are uh, looking into accessibility of the entire, uh, we call that functional task. For example, in an in a email uh, environment, we check uh, if um, a user can successfully um, um, perform the task from A to Z. For example, when it is about composing an email, sending an email goes, we make sure that the user can identify the element, interact with it, go through the, for example, a email header like a two CC field and the subject line and the body and then successfully send the email. So we consider the, uh, the functional task as a whole. So as you see uh, in functional, uh, accessibility, we have a more holistic view uh, over the process, and we are not just looking into accessibility of uh, individual elements only. So putting them together, so technical accessibility uh, is requirement for functional accessibility, and then uh, that is what we usually do. We check uh, for technical accessibility as well as functional accessibility. But as I said, Technical accessibility is a requirement for functional accessibility. So, uh, 
So uh, things that we should uh, make sure that we uh, know and then do before diving into screen reader accessibility. So <laughs> accessibility can be quite complex, uh, but it is not really that much. So I found uh, having a basic knowledge about HTML really helps um, because sometimes uh, you can easily dive into a problem and then you know identify that and then you can provide more precise feedback. Uh, so make sure that you uh, have some basic familiarity with HTML. Uh, you do you get you don't have to be an expert you don't you don't have to be a programmer but you have to know uh, some of those basic elements so there are a lot of tools that we can use to check for technical accessibility and then we will be introducing them later in this presentation and then they can give you some technical uh, uh, issues about the simple, some of the technical problems that we are running into the pages Okay. I see that sometimes when, when we are working, I'm working with, with colleagues uh, about testing, they get sometime into really, uh, in the, as my colleague usually said, that in the weed, and then uh, we forget the big picture. So uh, there are a lot of problems usually with uh, you know, random applications, but uh, when we are working, uh, and then the evaluating, we, we can compile a report and then you know, provide that report to those designers and developers and help them to understand that. But uh, note that you don't get, uh, you get, get lost in your testing and you need to focus on the really major issues not just uh, deep in the system and then here you found a, an element that uh, that for example this is uh, it is not technically accessible so uh, i have been uh, saying that you know when we are doing the testing if if you i had the chance of working to uh, a chance to work with you in the past you heard me uh, many times, we want to check for keyboard accessibility first. Uh, keyboard accessibility uh, is a really foundation for screen reader accessibility. So um, don't bother, I would say, very much if you know to test applications or websites that are not keyboard accessible. Um, yes, there are certain areas that screen reader uh, have more access to keyboard uh, uh, functionality, but uh, usually, uh, as I said, they depend very much on keyboard accessibility. So uh, when we do the keyboard accessibility, or when we are, there are things that, there are certain things that we really want to watch for. We check for the consistency. So the consistency, we are checking about visual consistency and technical te uh, functional access functional uh, consistency as as well as proper use of element what does it mean so it's sometimes you go from one page to another page i'm pretty sure you have experienced that so you cannot identify hey is the second secondary page is uh, the same uh, for, from the same family or is it from same domain or not and then you will be surprised, uh, maybe not if you are a screen, if you are a uh, mouse user, you probably don't didn't have a chance to discover that. But you will see that uh, a lot of time um, from one page to another page or from one form to another page, you see that the way that things are implemented are different. I give you an, a, a small example. For example, you see that in the same domain for a question, some like your gender, 
you see that some people they use radio options you know that one of that you can choose one of them and then you know in a very similar space i mean it's same domain you see that in other implementation or, or uh, other application of the of the same family you see that they are using combo box um people with disability like anyone uh, any user, they have time to familiarize themselves with the site. And then the consistency is really important because when I learn, when I spend the time to understand in this domain, they are using, for example, radio group for such questions. I am expecting those things happens also in other similar uh, you know, applications in that domain. And by not doing that, you are uh, really, or they are causing problem for us because we have to go through the discovery of every element. Oh, this is here, it's different. And then you know, another problem that we see that is, um, you know, they do not use their element properly. And you see that sometime in one place for the same function, they use a link. In another place, they use a button. Why? And then they they decorate that in a similar way. Maybe visually are okay, but behind the scene, there are two different elements, and the way how a screen reader user they handle them uh, are different. So links are links, and buttons are buttons, and we have different means to access them. So uh, consistency uh, is is great, and then also being the uh, and using the proper element, that is also uh, something that we want to see that. With the keyboard, that is something that, again, every testing should start with. So is it, somebody, is it something that everybody can do that? I assume everybody has a functioning keyboard. And then you can test the application. So when you are testing with the application with the keyboard, you want to be able to navigate uh, completely in the application with the keyboard. Should should really preferably disconnect your mouse or disable your mouse, uh, and then make sure that you stay with the keyboard only during that phase during that time. And then uh, you should be able to navigate entirely in the application, being able to reach every element and then uh, you know, perform the desired function. And then as you are navigating, interacting with the, uh, with the, with the application using the keyboard, uh, make sure that you have to always be able to see the focus indicator. Do not blame your eye, do not blame your the, you know, monitor. Uh, when you don't see the focus indicator, you don't see it. And then it should be, uh, there are some standards that, uh, you know, we don't want to, we will not dive into that, you know, how they should be. But uh, it should be uh, definitely something that uh, you all we should always be able to see the focus indicator, meaning where you are. And then, of course, when you are traveling with the keyboard in the application, you want to make sure that the keyboard, the, the focus, or the tab order is correct. Um, if you are a keyboard user, probably you have seen that sometime you know, are pressing tab and then you know see that the, the focus indicator or the, the, the it jumps, it doesn't jump in a logical order, it jumps just randomly in the application up and down or left and right. But uh, in a proper, uh, a, a, a properly uh, accessible uh, application, uh, should allow, I mean, you should be able to follow the tab order logic. Uh, a lot of application vendors or people, they are still referring to the shortcut keys. Uh, shortcut keys are good, but they are not considered as a primary means of accessibility. And uh, I usually give that example, you know, within Microsoft Word, you know, you probably need 200 shortcut keys to perform uh, some of the uh, intermediate function. Maybe you, have, you need another 200 for, uh, for Outlook, and then maybe 100 for other application. 
uh, if people with disability were that smart, that could remember all of those shortcut key, I think they would be completely in different position. Sh shortcut keys sh can be, are not considered as primary method of accessibility. They can be a handful, but they should be all consistent and, and meaningful. Uh, one thing that I we want to see that in uh, uh, in in uh, with this, uh, when we we check that is uh, we call that area landmark. When we or area regions, when I take you to a random page within a fraction of a second, you can identify what the page is and how it is constructed, and then depending uh, on what. It, uh, why you are on this page, you can narrow down your focus and then go after the uh, information that you came with. Uh, this is not possible for a screen reader user because they can see only one element at the time. When I say one element, it means one piece of text, one uh, graphic, one uh, link, one button, one text field, uh, uh, text area, or uh, you do not have, uh, uh, you know, info access to the surrounding information. You, you, you see everything, almost everything, but you do not know how they are related. So um, for a screen reader, when they come here, so if you just want to go from one element to another element, and remember that functional accessibility versus technical accessibility. Yeah, it might be technically accessible, but the functionality is not because by the time I find my my uh, you know the, the information that I came for, it might be two hundred tab key away, or it might take me you know twenty five minutes to get to that place. You can remember in the screen reader. Uh, Screen reader user, you tap, in, you tap, you go to an element, and you have to wait to hear that. And you said that, oh, this is not the link or the button or the element that I came for. So you, then you press another tap key. Then the same process until you reach the right element. So to address this issue, um, the, 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 there is a, a, a you know, accessibility, important accessibility component is called that area landmark, area really region. Practically, you divide the page into logical sections. Each page consists of the containers. And for example, you can see there is a container on the top, we call that banner. There is maybe a navigation bar underneath, and maybe another navigation bar on the left, on the main content area and footer. So, uh, Easily, very easily, these big containers that I call that application infrastructure, they can be labeled and then uh, as, a, as, a, as an ARIA region. So when I come to this page as a screen reader user, so I can bring up the list of the regions on this page. I will say, hey, I have a banner, I have a navigation region, I have a, a main region where usually the main information are. So I am uh, happy I mean, I, that I easily navigate to that section. So things that you can do that visually within fraction of a second, if a page has the proper regions, I can do that maybe within maybe less than a minute or 30 seconds. So still takes me longer, but at least this is doable. I don't have to press 200 time tab key to get to that place. So. Aria region is really an important component of accessibility. So there are several uh, seven predefined regions in, in HTML. Uh, uh, well, you know, uh, start with banner, main, navigation, complementary, uh, footer, or uh, content info, and, and so on. So uh, when, when we interact with the page, we can easy, easily see Oh, this container or this region is a navigation region, or the other region is a complementary region, and so on. So, 
uh, when once we start the area region, we want to be really complete. We do not want to leave any item uh, outside this region because otherwise it will be very difficult to discover. And then, then if you have, we have regions of the same type, for example, we have a navigation region on the top, we have one navigation on the left side. So when I bring up the list of the regions in my page, I might see, oh, there's a navigation region, there's another navigation region. I don't get any information about the location of this stuff. So that is, uh, you know, this is part of the practice that you, we should uh, label them, say that, you know, for example, this is a uh, main, re main navigation region, or a secondary navigation region, or whatever meaningful name that we can use. Then uh, the next important element of accessibility is, 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 is the headings. So uh, while we regions are helping us to understand the overall uh, uh, structure of the application, headings are me the means uh, to help us to understand the structure of the content. So we use headings uh, to structure our content. Uh, in HTML, we have six level of uh, headings, heading one, two, uh, through level six. And uh, we have, we need, uh, we, we have, we must have one heading one, telling us about the, we call that the main heading of the page, which is one, and major section in the content, they get the heading two, they have a prior heading two. And if your main has uh, sections, uh, they have subsections and they can get, you know, preceding heading three. So that way you build a hierarchy in your content. So when I go and then see a specific headings, uh, heading, I know that, hey, this heading, for example, is heading three. This heading three is a child of the previous heading two. So that way you get a good outline of the content. So of course the heading you know, must be also complete. It should not be partial. It should we cannot say that oh we have you two headings here and then we forget about the rest of the page. You know we have the heading should be uh, complete and then cover the entire page. And of course they should be meaningful. Would be novel element. I mean uh, you, we, uh, I, I see a, a lot of time that developers, they use uh, techniques that they mimic list. Uh, and it doesn't matter how, much, how hard you work to mimic a list, but as long as the basic HTML list element is not behind that, we do not see it. So because we see the list item, we can see that you know the, this uh, this is an item, but if it is not used, if uh, HTML and, uh, list uh, markup is not useful with it, we will not be able to see that this piece that I read, were, and then the other piece that I read, they belong to the same group of elements. So I will be demonstrating this stuff. So list uh, is another another item that we will discuss. So there are uh, three type of lists, order, unordered, and definition list. And then uh, they are very simple. Uh, you know, again, uh, you start with the uh, proper markup, and you can stylize it in a way that you want. But uh, it is important that the list markup should be behind every list. For the graphic, uh, again, uh, we want to... Uh, alternative text for uh, informational graphic. Uh, don't bother to uh, with the st uh, stylistic graphics, any graphic that does not convey any message. You, know, uh, you do not need to label. Uh, and I always say that in the higher education system, the alt text should be coming from those people who create or who add that graphic to the content. If, the, for example, is a course content, 
then the instructor, the professor who added that graphic, he or she knows the best who, what he or she wants to convey that message. So asking another person, an outsider, you know, to provide a, a meaningful alt text might not always uh, uh, produce the best results. So bug the uh, content creator for the alt text. So when we get the most uh, complicated part of the uh, interaction is full. Uh, when we talk about form or uh, form elements, uh, we are talking about buttons, the uh, input field, the text area, a checkbox, radio button. Uh, we talk about the combo box and then more complicated widgets like you no know, disclosure element, as you know, expand collapse and carousel and many, many other complex things. So um, we have in our the resources uh, that we will be sharing with you. Um, uh, APG, ARIA Practices Practice Guide, is the place to go. So for anything that we want to check, <clears throat> we want to make sure that the coding practice that, that, that they recommend uh, is followed. Uh, <clears throat> because browser manufacturers, they follow the same standard. Uh, assistive technology manufacturers, they follow the same standard. So if <clears throat> we all are following the same standard, the outcome might be much more promising if we don't do that. So uh, that, that is our Bible, <clears throat> that we always go and then check the code against the APG uh, best practices guide. And then, uh, and which is sometimes you know, not always. They always provide the uh, sample. They provide the definition of uh, all those uh, functionality and the key bindings. So it is really a comprehensive place that every developer should be familiar with and, and, and consult. Adi, we're at yes. one thirty. Thank you very much. So what screen reader are <clears throat> we have uh, a, a screen reader for every, for all system that I know from Linux uh, we have for Windows we have for Mac and iOS we use uh, voiceover for iOS Mac and on Windows we have more options <clears throat> and uh, which is you know the JAWS is the most commonly used uh, in screen reader in North America NVDA as well as <clears throat> narrator, which is uh, built in the screen reader from Microsoft. So, and, uh, the, the web aim has been checking for the uh, you know screen reader usage. They stopped. I think last time I checked that they stopped uh, getting the survey when surveying the screen reader user. Uh, what screens that they are using, but uh, but JAWS and then uh, JAWS uh, is the dominant one, very close to NVDA. Um, maybe by now it's different. NVDA is uh, you know has, is, has a bit more user, but I do not know that. Okay, um, remember screen reader user R for uh, screen reader user, uh, screen proof <coughs> readers are for a screen reader user. So it costs several hundred dollars. I mean, some of them NVDA is free, voiceover comes with the system, but JAWS is, uh, I think, over thousand dollars. I do not know exactly how much. Um, but remember, these are, these are made for a screen reader user. Many, many places, uh, some screen reader users, programs, especially JAWS. But when you get to an element and some accessibility features are not there, they have some, we call that guessing algorithm. So they have, they try to guess, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the part, the accessibility feature that developers has not implemented. So if you do the screen reader testing, and then you use for especially JAWS, and you go to an element and you say everything is working fine, 
don't conclude that because some of those results might be coming from this algorithm, from this guessing algorithm. And then if you use uh, NVDA or other screen reader, you would not have at the, the same result. So a screen reader program can be quite dangerous for the screen uh, for uh, for a screen reader for for the accessibility testing. It could uh, create a lot of false positive results. So the screen reader they have uh, generally the, the two modes. We call that browse mode and the interactive mode or interaction mode. Uh, in a, a, the browse mode, uh, uh, practically everything, every content on the page is linearized, virtualized from left to right, top to bottom. What does it mean? So in a normal mode, when you as a, a non-screen uh, reader user look at the screen, you can only tap to those focusable elements. Focusable elements are those elements that you can press the tab key and get them. But there are a lot of uh, static information on the text that usually you cannot focus on. So a screen reader uh, manufacturer, they had to come with a mode that allows user to read everything, to see everything, but they don't have, they, they, they lose all those relationship between these elements. So when I go to a page, I can see from top to bottom everything that is on that page, as I said. I can see the heading, I can see the text, I can see a graphic, I can see the you know table or a table cell, list uh, list item, whatever. but I do not know the relay visual relationship. Because of this structure, this markup, a structural markup that they use in the code, I can understand that hey, I am entering a list, or I am seeing a, a, I see the, the, the headings here, or I am entering a table. Uh, so, uh, it, yes, we see one element at a time, but thanks to this uh, structure or markup, I can know where I am and then what I am doing. With it. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, not always, but <laughs> most of that. Uh, one of the biggest, uh, really, uh, most difficult thing that we are facing is uh, is the discovery of page. So we go a page. Since we do not see this visual element, we see these elements and uh, individually, that makes it very difficult for us to uh, so see the relationship. I mean, like it happened this morning with one of my colleagues, Gaby. We were looking into, um, at, I think, Excel online, and we were looking for a specific function. While that function was visually uh, very, you know, easy to discover that, but it was really, uh, uh, I mean, I, I think if, if, if Gaby was not uh, with me in the office, I would not be able to find it. Not definitely within, within 30 minutes. So uh, that is really important that, that uh, when we use, uh, when we go to the application, those applications are, are well structured uh, and they, proper, they use the proper element and proper uh, navigation mechanism. Uh, otherwise, you know, uh, like what I did this morning, I had to go through the Excel online and go through all those elements with, uh, you know, list of 76 items and read one by one. And still, I was not able to find it because it was in a sub menu and it was not announcing itself. It was a sub menu. So that that was. Uh, caused me uh, such a long, uh, I spent so much time for navigation. So the quick answer, you can use the screen reader for testing. Yes, but as long as you know what you are doing. My recommendation is that do not use it, but you know, if you want to do it, please do it. But please be very careful. Because as I said, you know, you can, uh, you can, you can, uh, get a lot of mixed result and, and uh, because of those algorithm and the you know skill reader report a sophisticated uh, learning process. This is really not something that you just tab or you error up and down. There are hundreds of hundreds of commands or features 
I mean, when we teach somebody about that uh, skill, uh, JAWS, uh, to use JAWS, uh, it, it can take really months, months, I'm really not exaggerating, months to train them. And after all, they become, you know, very basic use. <clears throat> so now a developer comes, somebody comes and then do that. So it is very difficult to have a sophisticated screen reader testing uh, if you are not a native user. Okay, I have a series of basic comments here. The slides will be shared with you. And then there's some, we call, we call that survival uh, screen reader command. Um, and then uh, this is about JAWS and then NVDA. Uh, and then it helps you to have some fun uh, with, with testing. So this information will be shared with you. OK. OK. This is the, now the real time that I can test it. For uh, I need to unshare my screen and enable uh, voice. So I'm going to turn on my audio. Screen share. Can you? Music currently unmuted. Can you come through? Accessible you university. Can you confirm that you can hear my screen reader? Accessible university. Accessible university demo site accessible version. Uh, Hari, yes. 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 Thank you. you very much. So I slow down. Slower, 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 slower. My colleague Dan Condom is not here. And then here. Otherwise, uh, Hari, slow down. Slow down. Accessible university demo site. Okay, accessible. slow down. <laughs> In the afternoon, I don't make it too slow, so don't make you sleepy. <clears throat> You need really strong coffee to survive a slow jaws. <clears throat> Same page link skip to me. Okay, here I'm in a page. Uh, uh, thanks to Terio uh, McCulloch, and, and uh, he developed uh, two pages. I mean, this fake university page, uh, fully ac I mean, the accessible and inaccessible version. They visually look very similar, but behind the scene, the coding is completely different. I guess I am in a in an accessible, accessible version. Demo site dash accessible. Yeah, I'm in an accessible version. Okay, so here I told you about the when we <coughs> uh, first okay, keyboard testing. So I am pressing tab key. Accessible university demo site accessible version banner demo site menu navigation region list before. As link. you see, I, I mean I have I cannot see the uh, uh, focus indicator, but I have been told we have clear focus indicator. After current so page link, you know where I am. Info link. Main menu navigation region. Academics button collapsed. So if you are not seeing that, uh, please let me know. I was about to make a joke, but, but I, I, I changed my mind. So. Uh, do you do everybody can see that or anyone cannot see the focus Admissions indicator. button collapsed. Visitors button collapsed. Main region, slideshow region, previous button. So uh, does it mean everybody can see? <clears throat> I turned off all my audio uh, uh, zoom uh, feedback so I can focus on the presentation. If I go those additional stuff, I do uh, you know, uh, if I turn those uh, Zoom indicator, uh, so notification, it will be very distracting. OK, this is a bit of focus indicator. And then uh, I guarantee that we can uh, perform all functions here. Uh, actually, it is nothing behind that. This is just the first page. There is no function behind it. But uh, I can navigate to entire page with the keyboard. But as far as the screen reader accessibility, accessibility goes, <clears throat> here, or, or, or there's another thing After I wanted to mention link. that. Uh, After current page link, info link, main menu navigation region, list with four items about button collapsed. Here. Enter, expanded. It expanded? List of four items nesting level one. Then this is interesting. I told you about the list. It's You heard that. It's a list of four items. I asked a screen reader to read it 
again what is just said that list of four items nesting level one list of four items so i know that when i am getting into list there are four items remember i see only one item at a time so i do not know am i entering a list with one item or uh, you know 500 items so it is really important to to know that <coughs> where i am getting Link news. so Link governance. and then uh, <coughs> Uh, link diversity. Link contact us. List and nesting level and one. And when I get to the end of the list, it reads list and nesting level. List end. So that 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 this is an indicator for me. Hey, I'm done with that list. So yes, I do not see in the same way that you see that, but I see that in such a way that kind of simulates similar experience. So you see that there are four items there. I see that, but the way that you uh, uh, perceive uh, you know, uh, you you know, you interact with it. You see it is a little different than mine. Academic button collapsed. So I press escape key. Escape collapsed. Collapsed. And he said that collapsed. So and my focus went back to that uh, uh, item. So this is a one thing that I wanted to show with the keyboard accessibility. But now let us a little focus on the more screen reader features. I told you about the region uh, or area landmark or area regions which I told you that tells me how the page is constructed. So I can, uh, in this mode, when I am in my screen reader, which is JAWS, if I type, for example, R, my screen reader is intercepting the command, and then it performs that command. If I type R, it means JAWS, go and find the next region for me. Same page link, skip the main content. It took me to the this region. I press R again. Demo site menu navigation region. So, and and if I press Shift R, same page it goes back. It, it reversed. Hadi, uh, we're at one forty-five. Thank you. So when I when I get now, uh, but this might be a little difficult to get a big picture. So a screen reader offers a uh, a feature uh, showing all those uh, uh, all those regions in one list. Document here. regions. Doc so here is the. My screen is showing me that oh, we have a banner region. One demo site menu navigation. One of one. And banner. inside the banner, I have a demo region. Zero main menu navigation. Two of five. Main menu, on which it tells me that it is a navigation region. It is you know the designer had taught it. It should be this you know a navigational navigation region. Main open. And main. This is a main content area. And then one slideshow carousel. Inside that we have a carousel. Video player region. And video player. Zero. Apply now. Complementary information. And this is a complementary region. Content information. Content information and so on. So <clears throat> I should remember that I should not talk when the screen reader is talking because it would be very difficult at your end to understand. Uh, and then the beauty of that is that it is it shows me not only how the page is constructed, but when I decide to navigate to that section, I can easily navigate, go there. Apply now. One slide zero main open. For example, to main, I press enter. Enter. And it takes me right in the body of that page. So we it said that main region. And from here, I can arrow down and just read the content. Group start one to four. An old brick building reflected in the glass exterior of a modern building slide. And this is the image, the alt text for image. A modern school. Group end one to four. Previous button. Next button. List of four items. Slide one button current. So that, that is how, uh, how uh, it works uh, um, with the region. A similar thing with the headings. I can press Accessible H. I am at the top of the page. I press H. Accessible university heading level one graphic. It takes me to the... A heading. Welcome. Heading level two. The next heading, and. Bienvenido. Heading level two. That was the Spanish. A little in a in a, in a uh, low quality uh, voice. Uh, heading level two. Bienvenido. Jump to line dialogue. Enter and line then, escape. And uh, then again, if I want like, a better picture of the content, uh, the heading list. Heading, heading list dialogue. Accessible univ Welcome to. Tells me. Home. Accessible universe. Welcome to. Bienvenido to. Can you spot the barriers to AU enrollment trends? These are all the headings. And then the numbers that you see on the right side, these are the heading level. Can you spot the barriers to Bienvenido to 
So all of them are heading to AU enrollment trends, AU video two, media player three. So when it tells me media player three, so I see that hey, AU video two. This guy is heading two. Media player and this three. This one is in three. So I know that this is a kind of child of AU video this two. Guy. So because you know we said that we want to use the heading in a hierarchical way. Media player three. Apply now. Two. And then now we have, when I get to it, I went one layer up. So uh, with, I, I told you about the, this uh, list. Uh, uh, I, uh, I told you about the headings, uh, regions. Escape. And then important thing is about the uh, forum controls. Name edit required. Blank. So Enter. when Name. I am this pay with this element, so I have nothing here, uh, but... but um, uh, I was showing my braille display. This is nothing on my screen with that. On my the braille display. But when I ask Jaws to read the label for this place, name as required as pop up. It tells me name and it has, this is required. So these are the stuff that programmatically has been added to this form. So I know it is a, a, a text box and it is required. So when I tap, for example, to the next element, and let's listen together. Hadi, email edit required. Blank, required as pop-up. It said email, and, and it is required. And then we have time. Adder, add, uh, redu, country edit, blank. USA, desired major S group, list with six items, computer science checkbox not checked. You see that when I arrow up and down, uh, when, when, when I get here, it said that, uh, it said, uh, let, let us read it together. Listen together. Computer science checkbox not checked. Computer science checkbox not checked. And when I press the space bar, space checked. It said that checked. And if I read it okay, again, computer science checkbox checked. So it tells me, it means it informs all of them. This is accessible thanks to the developer who consider who considered accessibility as they were designing. Otherwise, it would not be. It would not be a screen reader wouldn't be able to provide such information. So similar Engineering thing. checkbox not checked. Economics, uh, physics checkbox, psychology, check, Spanish checkbox, security quest, submit button. And submit. Error, error. Your answer to the security question was not correct. Please try again. Security question group. Sunday, Kyle, Friday. Which of these is not a day? Edit required. Blank. You see that? I mean, you give me an error and read the error. And then I can navigate with the keyboard. Submit button. Security question group, Sunday, Kyle, Friday, which of these is not a day, edit required, blank. So, you say again. Yeah. Sunday, Kyle, Friday, which of these is not a day, edit required. Enter, error, your answer to the security question was not correct, please try again. So, that, that is a... Escape, virtual so, piece. Uh, these are some of the stuff that I wanted to share with you. Um, I will be glad to uh, meet with you in person via Zoom. Uh, to talk about any accessibility concern or evaluation that you want to do. Um, uh, you might know that we have a monthly meetup. Uh, we have been uh, doing that for decades uh, and brought, educated many, many colleagues on about accessibility through that, uh, um, uh, that uh, you know, monthly meetup. Uh, we were meeting for on second Thursday of each month at 10. And as some of our key participants can no longer make that appointment, we decided to really make a, another survey. And then uh, I'm going to announce it. I will be sending an email. Uh, so the, the meeting will be on the fourth Tuesday of each month at 11 a.m. Uh, I will be uh, sending an email and announcing the, the various list about it. But this is a place that you are most welcome uh, to join, to come, and then share your accessibility question, concern. Uh, this is a group of accessibility-minded people who come and share their experience. So with this, I wanted to uh, uh, pass it to uh, um, Anna Marie and see uh, if you have questions. So purposely, I shortened my presentation to get to spend more time on QA.
We do. We have like kind of a little conversation going on in the sidebar. So here's what we have. Is the number of list items and list end something the developer put in the code, for example, via ARIA, or is it automatically described that way by the screen reader? Thanks. And, and Jeannie answered that if a group of items are organized in an HTML list, for example, unordered list, the screen reader will report the number of items and the end of the list. And then the response is, I guess I have the URL and could look at, at it with developer tools. Um, but then goes on, okay, not in the code. So with ARIA labels, the screen reader can look ahead to see how many items are in the active element, correct? I'm not completely sure of active element in where. Uh, can, can, can you read that last sentence one more time? Yes, so with ARIA labels, the screen reader can look ahead to see how many items are in the active element, correct? And I believe we're talking about a list here. Hey, hey, y'all, that's me. Um, I, I follow that up with a comment saying, I don't see ARIA performing that function here. Um, and so the uh, you guys were kind of, you've already answered the question for me. It's the screen reader doing it based on the HTML, not based on anything additional added by the developer. Thanks. So they, I mean, the, the, the developer, they just need to follow the best practices. Because again, we have the we have to use the same Bible, <laughs> you know, the developers, manufacturer, and then end user. So the, the, when we are on the same page, you know, then-, then they... Absolutely. I'm just aware that there are things like, you know, like the title attribute and ARIA things, which require you to know a little bit more than just the semantic structure of the HTML. And here it's, I'm, I'm pleased to learn that the semantic structure of the HTML is adequate to get that result with the screen reader. So, hey, you just, you said that ARIA label, I, mean, I just want to say that for those of you who are going to our ARIA, which sometimes, many, many, many times is necessary. But note that the first rule of ARIA says that don't use ARIA. <laughs> it, because once you That's go right. to that route, you know, you can make ARIA list or you can ARIA checkbox. But once you do it, then you overwrite all those behaviors of checkboxes. So browsers, for example, are automatically make the checkbox a focusable element. And then, uh, then uh, but once you use, uh, for example, a div element into, you know, checkbox, then you have to implement all those behaviors that comes with the checkbox. So, and that is a lot of extra work and then code maintenance. So, but I know, I know that some in some application there is no other way. You have to use it. But once you use it, but note that you have to uh, uh, manually implement those behaviors. Okay, Ken, Ken, thank you. It was a good question, uh, Anna Marie. Uh, just a couple comments. Um, this has been quite informative. Thank you for covering this topic. And yes, writing semantic HTML is the way to go as a first step. Great. Wonderful. So uh, we have one fifty-six p.m. So we have four minutes. Anyone has a, a question? Just turn on your microphone and or, or send the question via chat. Okay, I think we've hit the crickets portion of our session today. Once again, uh, thank you everyone for coming. And as I said, uh, this is very, very basic uh, uh, kind of introduction in the screen reader testing. Um, we do that uh, uh, consulting here about accessibility and uh, feel free to contact us and all uh, to what, what is, uh, to, uh, there is a lot of information through the PowerPoint slides that uh, Anna Marie will be sharing. Uh, you can contact us at you know either directly or through the help at uw.edu, and then uh, subscribe to some of those existing links, lists like accessible web, uh, front end dev that Genie is running, running, 
uh, UW Web and Liaison uh, mailing lists. So uh, I think all of them are in the PowerPoint uh, list as a resource. And then we would love to have the opportunity to discuss with you in depth about the accessibility projects that you have. And again, thank you very much for coming.